Following the 2023 NBA Draft, the Los Angeles Lakers front office was quick to scoop up some of the best talent remaining in the undrafted free agency pool, and it was Colin Castleton who got fans excited with his unique combination of length, athleticism, and a fundamentally sound, well-rounded game. There's plenty of reason to assume that out of all the incoming rookies on the Lakers next season, it might be Castleton who would be able to make an impact immediately, given the fact that he's already very polished at 23 years old, he plays a very simple game that should be easily transferable in an off-the-bench role, and most importantly, the Los Angeles Lakers have been desperate for some signs of potential at the center position beyond Anthony Davis. With that said though, although Castleton's praise and anticipation might be warranted, fans seem to have overlooked another polished product Rob Plinko was able to scoop up immediately following the 2023 NBA Draft. This incoming Lakers rookie, currently signed to a two-way deal, is already 24 years old, but as we mentioned, an older product is not an indication that this player can't be impactful in his first season. Matter of fact, the exact opposite. Given all the additional development and skill set refinement these older prospects benefit from from staying in school. From the title and thumbnail, many of you guys already know that the polished product the Lakers are able to scoop up alongside Colin Castleton immediately after the draft is 6'4", elite 3 d talent from Missouri, Demoy Hodge. There's an extremely strong case that out of 17th overall pick Jaden Hood Shafino, 40th overall pick Maxwell Lewis, incoming two-way contract Colin Castleton, and fellow two-way contract Demoy Hodge, it's actually Demoy Hodge who will have the easiest transition at the next level, considering in his final season at Missouri, he broke out to be exactly what every team wants to see in a 3 and D backcourt player. So that's exactly what we'll be discussing in today's video, why Demoy Hodge managed to slip out of the draft, why he's bound to quickly grow on the coaching staff, and possibly earn some rotational minutes in the near future, why he's a highly promising prospect to immediately thrive playing off LeBron James and Anthony Davis, and who are some realistic player comparisons for what Demoy Hodge could be as a player one day. But first let me know down in the comment section below, out of all the Lakers incoming rookies between Jalen hood Shafino, Maxwell Lewis, Colin Castleton, and Demoy Hodge, which prospect are you most excited about? Also, who do you believe will be the most impactful in the rookie season with the Los Angeles Lakers? Just like how Colin Castleton plays a very simplistic and fundamentally sound game that should be immediately transferable to the next level, once Castleton puts on some size to match the new level of physicality, Demoy Hodge as of today could be as plug and play as it gets. Hodge's bread and butter is shooting the basketball, whether on or off ball, and he has a pesky defensive motor that fans will surely come to love as soon as summer league starts. If we're being honest, Hodge probably wouldn't be on a two-way contract for any team if it weren't for his breakout final season at Missouri where he was able to put up an impressive 15 points, 2.5 steals per game, to go along with 40% shooting from beyond the arc on nearly 7 3-point attempts per game. Clearly the additional year Hodge spent in college proved to be worthwhile, as he's now seen as a legitimate 2-way prospect, who gets it done on both ends by efficiently spacing the floor and disrupting the passing lanes to ultimately generate easy looks for his teammates. Roughly 70% of Hodge's shot attempts came from beyond the arc, and if he's able to efficiently do so alongside superstars like LeBron James and Anthony Davis who command so much attention down low, Hodge might just be walking to a situation that kicks off a long fruitful career as a prototypical 3D talent that teams can't seem to get enough of. Speaking of defense though, that's been arguably the most consistent part of Hodge's game ever since he stepped foot on the court, being able to be a pest guarding either backward position, and it was his offensive game that just recently turned a corner this past season. If Hodge is able to sustain a level of 3-point shooting above 37% as a Laker, he's bound to get ample opportunity to showcase he's worth upgrading from his 2-way contract, just like how Cole Swider was given the opportunity last season, coming off a scorching hot summer league performance. The biggest difference is that once Cole Swider started to get cold from the field, he had nothing left to offer Darvinham's coaching staff, but with Demoy Hodge on the other hand, so long as he continues to display a non-stop defensive motor, he's got a good chance of being a solid rotational piece as soon as his rookie season. So we've talked about how incoming rookie Demoy Hodge already possesses a highly in-demand two-way skill set as a 3 and D guard who does most of his contributions off the ball, but now the question left to be answered is who would be a fair player comparison for Hodge's ceiling as an NBA player. As mentioned, Hodge is already 24 years old, so there probably isn't too much untapped potential left to showcase, and on top of that, he's at an awkward height at 6'4 as a natural shooting guard. There aren't too many 3 and D talents coming in at that size, which makes drawing an accurate player comparison a little bit easier. The two names that constantly pop up as player comparisons for the type of player that Demoy Hodge could potentially be once he gets acclimated to the NBA level, if ever, is that Denver Nuggets champion Contavious Caldwell-Pope, 
along with former Denver Nugget and current Orlando Magic 3D veteran Gary Harris. For one, like KCP and Harris, Hodge is a small two guard with below average athleticism relative to NBA standards, but he's capable of being lethal as a low volume, highly efficient off ball contributor who doesn't need the ball in his hands to be effective, rather his gravity alone moving off the ball and getting into position for his teammates to find him on open looks is a weapon in itself. Whether or not Hodge is able to get to the level of today's version of Gary Harris post injury, let alone Contavious Cowell Pope territory, it will be highly dependent on Hodge's ability to pack on some size from his current small stature of 180 pounds. Gary Harris is also 6'4 like Hodge, but Harris has nearly 30 pounds on the incoming rookie that ultimately allows Harris to guard opposing point guards, shooting guards, and sometimes even some small forwards. That's arguably the biggest concern, aside from the fact that Hodge is currently 24 years old, soon to be 25 in December, is the fact that Hodge's smaller frame leaves him prone to being more vulnerable on switches against larger opponents. As of right now, Hodge is equipped to handle most guards at the NBA level, but if he wants to increase his chances of cementing a long and fruitful career as a 3 and D guard like Gary Harris, then adding some mass will be needed. Even if that's not top priority for Hodge, and he ultimately decides to stay with his physical stature as is, there would still be a role left for him to serve on an NBA team, but it would just significantly alter his career trajectory for the worse. There are legitimately undersized 3 and D guards spread across the league who might not be as notable, being that their playing time is limited to specific matchups, such as DeAnthony Melton of the Philadelphia 76ers, who stands at 6'2", and provides 3 and D production as a combo guard. It's not the perfect apples to apples comparison, being that Melton's capable of sliding to the point guard position as a playmaker and open up more playing time for himself. But the point is that the difference between Hodge being a stocky 6'4 and his current slender 6'4 frame would have a major impact on his career trajectory at the NBA level. Nonetheless, Hodge will be in good hands, spending some time down with the South Bay Lakers throughout the season, considering almost every prospect with a natural high motor on defense, walks out of the program as a new and improved, attractive two-way talent, such as Josh Hart, House Caruso, Stanley Johnson, Max Christie, and of course current fan favorite Austin Reeves. So let me know down in the comment section below, how do you guys feel about the Moy Hodges player comparison? Are there better player comparisons out there? And more importantly, between all the exciting prospects the Lakers are bringing in, those being Jalen Hood Shafino, Maxwell Lewis, Colin Castleton, and now Demoy Hodge, which incoming prospect do you believe has the greatest chance of making an impact in the rookie season? But that's it for the video, take it easy guys.